Shalom, Shalom. This is Mayael Binya. I want to come to you from the book of Psalms, Psalms 27. I will be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Hallelujah. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up, he shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies around about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, Seek ye my face, my heart say, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Hallelujah. This is what I firmly believe in. Psalms 21 completely express where my allegiance lies. This psalm completely um, brings clarity for my decision to walk away from Christianity. This psalm let me know who I'm supposed to be completely um, devo devoted to. Who I'm supposed to be serving. Who I'm supposed to believe in. Who I'm supposed to um, honor and serve. This psalm brings all that to the forefront. And I want to, um, to explain why. Within Christianity we are taught. Well I was taught during my times. So let me just speak of myself. While I was a Christian I was taught that the name above all names is Jesus. As a Christian I was taught Jesus is God. As a Christian I was taught that God became a man. And that man he became was Jesus. And that this man Jesus has to die for my sins in order for me to have a relationship with God. This is what I was taught as a Christian. And I was taught as a Christian that we cannot keep the laws of God. God knew we could not keep them. So this is why he sent Jesus. To do them for us because we couldn't. And once he do the law properly, then he will teach us the law for some reason. Knowing we can't do it. But, you know, that's another story in itself. And then he will die for us so that we can have a relationship with God. Because we were just hopelessly lost. There's nothing we could do to even draw closer to God. So, the remedy to sin was God becoming a man, living Torah, Teaching it to a people that could never understand it and do it anyway. And then dying for us. 
that's mainstream Christianity in a uh, in a nutshell. Leaving out a few things, but that's mainstream Christianity. But when you read Psalms 27, when you return to the Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures, the Holy Scriptures, when I say Holy Scripture, I am speaking of the Old Testament only. Not saying that there are not some good things in the New Testament writings, because there are some good things in the New Testament writings. But it's only that which echoes was already written in the um, old. But really it's just the Tanakh. It's just the scriptures. There's nothing old about the first half of an um, English Bible. Because that is where God speaks. That is where God makes himself known to us. So there's nothing outdated or irrelevant about it. God said of his own word that it is everlasting. Because it comes from him. Because he's everlasting. He said that his word is true. So if his word is true. How can it be falsehood? Just something to think about. But now I want to read Psalms. 27 again. This time I want to. Restore. The name of the creator. The one that we should be worshipping. The one that we should adore. Honor and serve only. The one that we're supposed to give our hearts over to hallelujah Yahweh is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear Yahweh is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid that verse alone is enough to stop because we have to understand our ancient forefathers the people of the book in their righteousness when they walk upright to God and according to his will this is the one they was talking about they was not talking about a son of God they were not talking about a God that will become a man 2,000 years later they had do no concept of the importance of a Messiah who will be God that will have to die for the um, sins of the world let alone for the sins of Israel that is not there so we see that these people only put their faith in Yah. And Yah is the shortened form of saying the full name. That's all it is. And you can find that in your English Bible. But most of the time it will say Jah. For like Jehovah it will say Jah to shorten it. But there is um, no Y's. I mean there is no J's in the um, Hebrew. It's a why. So um, let me go back again. It said, Yahweh is my light. So the my light is not the Son of God. My light is Yahweh, who is God. Why why am I gonna bypass the Father who is the light to go to the Son who reflects the light of the Creator? Just go to the source. And we see that the people of old always went to the source. Directly. Now even though it was priests there doing what God called them to do. So that's not contrary. God already set up uh, established order for his people. But they went through. Directly to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They did not pray to the creator using another name. They pray directly to the creator using his memorial name that stands throughout all generations. The name that is to be remembered and mentioned by his people. Period. There is no other name that you could say above his or couple along with his name. Hallelujah. It said, who shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is my strength of my life. So the strength of my life is Yahweh alone. When I was a Christian, I would say the strength of my life was Jesus. But I'm no longer a Christian no more. It's because of the text itself. Let me know my life, my strength is the creator alone. Of whom shall I be afraid? I don't fear any man simply because if you have God backing you, if God is your strength, God is your life, God is your light, 
Why should you fear anything when you have the creator of heaven and earth engulfing you, I mean, encompassing you about, protecting you? Why would you fear what people think of you? Because trust me, I do not fear what people think of me. And I know people think a whole lot about me. And it's not all good. But do I fear it? No. Because people have the right to their opinions. So therefore, why get offended if they call me the devil, Beelzebub, the Antichrist? I have been called all those things before, so do I care? No. Simply because I belong to Yahuwah. And what he says about me is far greater than what many people say about me. So, therefore, I rest my case. I don't care what people say about me. Verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies... And my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Now you got to understand verse 2 is tied into verse 1. The enemy of those that have embraced what I just read in verse 1. The enemies are not going to be able to triumph over you. It's just like unboxing. Your enemy might get a good few. They might you know, land a few blows. But the objective is to win the fight. You might get round one. You might get round three. But when it's all said and done, I'm going to win on the scorecard or I'm going to knock you out. That's just bottom line because God is my everything. Verse three. The host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. So we can see this person saying no matter what goes on in my surroundings. No matter what goes on in my life. I'm holding on to the understanding that I have the creator. I'm walking with the creator. The creator has me. I'm close to his bosom. I'm walking upright before him. And when I do wrong. I repent, I confess my faults, and I keep on walking. Because he is faithful and just to forgive as he has said. So if I'm walking in accordance with his um, teachings, how can I be in error? That's something to think about. Verse 4. One thing have I desired of Yahuwah. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of Yahuwah all the days of of my life to behold the beauty of Yahuwah and to inquire in his temple so we can see right here everything I desire everything I long for I go to the source of those things is Yahuwah it, it, it don't say, the text did not say one thing have I desired of the Messiah it don't say one thing have I desired of the Son of God it doesn't say one thing I have desired of Jesus. It plainly states, and you can read it yourself, it's in Psalms 27, verse 4. It says, one thing I have desired of the Lord. We know the Lord there is representing, is replacing what is there in the Hebrew text, which is the name of the Creator. It says, one thing that I have desired of Yehovah, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Yehovah. Now, we, you could drive all around your community and in your neighborhood, you will see houses that have been established in the name of Jesus. You're basically going to the house of Jesus. You're not going to the house of God. You're going to a house erected to give Jesus worship and praise because he is your God. Period. That's it in a nutshell. Now, there's many people waking up and understand that Jesus is not God. But they still fellowship at these churches. That was erected for one purpose. Well two purposes. Two purposes. And this is this is from my understanding. From my background. The, they erect these places of worship. To uplift the name of Jesus. And to have a place for you to gather. And to collect your money. That's my opinion. I got the right to it. And we done seen enough scandals exposing these people that do just that. So, really, I have things, I have facts backing me up. Now, is every church corrupt? 
No. Every church I, after your money and want to embezzle you and stuff, no, I'd be a fool to say that. Because there are many places of worship that do try to do things the right way and do try to benefit the community that they are within. But is that every church? No. And we know that for a fact. No. Every place of worship, some of them have hidden agendas. But that's another video to itself. Oh, let's get back to this. Verse 4. That I may dwell in the house of Yahweh all the days of my life to behold the beauty of Yahweh and to inquire in his temple. We go to the house of God, a true house of God, that is truly about his business, that wants to just worship and exalt his name. But if we want to be his, historically accurate here, there's only one house of God, and it was the temple. And he went to the temple to inquire of God. But no, there's no outstanding temple. We're not in the land of our forefathers. We're in the land of our captives. We're in the land of our captivity. So, of course, but now even here we have established houses, places of study that are supposed to be all about honoring his name, serving him, and want to better understand that which he um, inquires of us. And this is why these houses are established. To have a place that we could gather study and acquire of this great king that we serve verse 5 for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in the pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me up upon a rock we gotta understand this he here is talking about Yahweh. it really should have been capitalized but it's not but it should be capitalized to let you know who this person is trusting in so greatly. The he is talking about Yahuwah. The he here is not talking about Messiah. It's not talking about the Son of God. It's talking about the um it's talking about the Holy One of Israel, who is Yahuwah, the Elohim, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the one that he trusts in. This is the one that he trusts to hide him and protect him. And to set him up upon a rock. Set him up on something firm. Not no sinking sand. Something firm. Verse 6. And now shall my head be lifted up. Above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer. In his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yea I will sing praise unto Jehovah. So we see right here. In a nutshell, this place that he is going to is the house of God. He's going to the place of study, the place of worship. And it is the sing praises unto Yahuwah. You did not go into the house of God. They were not in the temple singing no praises, singing no worship unto the Son of God, unto the Messiah. They praised and directed all their worship and praise and devotion to Yahuwah, the Elohim, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our forefathers, period. There was no name being coupled along with his or replacing his holy name. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Hear, O Yahuwah, when I, um, when I, excuse me. Hear, O Yahuwah, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. So, see right here. But I, this is another verse that says, well, I came out of Christianity. I do not cry out to Jesus. I cry out to Yahuwah. And something, here's a little sidebar right here. We see in the Gospel of John that Jesus made known the name of the Creator and, and, and said that his disciples were kept. In the name of the creator. Not his own name. So that's just something to think about. Yeshua said his disciples. Were kept. In the name of the creator. And he made known that name. To them. So how now are we going to exalt. His name over the name. That he made known. And that they were protected in. It really don't make no sense. When you take the time to think about it. 
It makes no sense. I'm going to read verse 7 again. Hear, O Jehovah, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. Verse 8. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, My face, Yahweh, will I seek. Verse 8 is very powerful. This is something we have to understand. Verse 8. Yahweh, this is David declaring that Yahweh said unto him, Seek me. So if Yahweh is saying, Seek me, where is where is this understanding that we're supposed to seek the Messiah? That we're supposed to seek the Son of God when God is telling David, seek me. Then we, we see David's response. He said he said in his heart, in his whole being, you, Yahuwah, will I seek. He didn't say, no, Yahuwah, I'm not going to seek you. I'm not going to call upon your name. I'm going to call upon the name of your son who is actually you. Forget your set-apart name. I'm going to exalt another name above your name and still think I'm giving you honor and praise. Doesn't make sense. I'm going to read verse 8 again. When thou sayest, seek me, seek ye my face. Excuse me. When thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Yahuwah, will I seek. So that's there in a nutshell. It's one person that I seek. When I was a Christian, as I said before, I'm no longer a Christian. But when I was a Christian, I was seeking to be before the face of Jesus. We see that text don't support that. Yet we say within Christianity that Jesus is from everlasting. That Jesus ran around in glory with the Father. He always existed and sat on the right hand of the Father. Excuse me. But the father never mentions this son from eternity's past that was always with him sitting on his right hand. We see no visions of the prophets that had visions, that had dreams of another throne next to the throne of Yah. Never. Yeah, he's supposed to be up there sitting with the Father. But no vision, no, no dreams of two thrones and the Son of God sitting beside the Father. We don't have it. We don't have it in the Tanakh. We don't have it in the Holy Scriptures. Go to verse 9. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. So we can see David is saying, God, you are my salvation. Don't leave me. Don't forsake me. This God he is talking about and referencing here is Yahuwah. Or you can shorten and say Yah. David is not talking about, I hope the Son of God will not forsake me. I don't want Jesus to, to leave me. Jesus, you are my salvation. That's not what David is talking about. This is not what this Psalms is talking about. This is talking about there's only one person, excuse me, you know, that is your salvation. That is Yahweh Elohim. Yah, our power. He is our salvation. Period. Period. Verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then Yahuwah will take me up. Now you see, only Yahuwah is going to take you up. It didn't say Yahuwah and it didn't say the father and the son is going to take you up. It didn't say Yahuwah and Jesus is going to take you up. He said only Yahuwah is there to take him up, to lift him up, to protect him. I mean, these things are very self-explanatory. Verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Yahuwah, and lead me in a plain path because of my because of my enemy. So he said, Teach me thy way. David is wanting 
Yahweh to teach him the path of Torah, the path of righteousness, which is the way of Yahweh. His way is the teachings that he gave for his people to walk according to. And David is saying, Yahweh, help me, help me in this path. Give me understanding. You know, open my eyes that I may see the beauty of your Torah. And when we walk according to um, the desire and will of God, our enemy will not triumph over us. It's just that simple. Verse 12. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are rise up against me, and such as breathe out cruelties. Now we got to understand, David knows if the people will go contrary, even if you as an individual go contrary to the will of God, God will put you in captivity. He will put you in a situation to, to get your attention, so to speak. That he's trying to use it as a buffer in effect to get you to see the errors of your way and to repent. And that's what he's talking about. He said, yeah, yeah, I just want to walk with you and you alone. I don't want to be turned over to my enemies. For that to happen, you, all you have to do is walk upright. Even though your enemies may come, they will not triumph over you when it's all said and done. Hallelujah. Verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of Yahweh in the land of the living. So we can see right here he believed in one thing. He didn't believe in the Son of God. He didn't believe in the blood of the Son of God. He believed that he would see the goodness of Yahweh in the land of the living. He believed, he trusted in the goodness of Yahweh. And even in the times of this trials and the tribulations that David was going through, he knew if he if he never let go of this, he will once again see the goodness of Yahweh in the land. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Wait on Yahweh. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on Yahweh. Hallelujah. So we see right there, it's only one person. We're supposed to wait on. That's Yahweh. David did not say wait on Messiah. He did not say wait on the Son of God. He did not say plead the um, plead the blood. He said wait on Yahweh. Yahweh is your light, your strength. He's your everything. He said wait on Yahweh. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait I say on Yahweh. My confidence, my drive is knowing that Yahweh is good. Yahweh is merciful. Even though I go through trials, even though I may cry sometimes, I quickly shake myself and realize Yahweh is my God. Yahweh is my strength. So I take my eyes off these situations. I will not let them. Burden me down. Get me depressed. I will trust in Yahweh. Do what I need to do. Trust in his. Um, his guidance. Do what's you know, inquired of me. But my confidence is in Yahweh. Not, not the arms of flesh. Not in the son of God. My confidence is in Yahweh. And standing on verse 27. I don't see how anyone could say I'm in error. Based off what. Psalms 27 says. In many Christian churches will read this psalm. I've been in many churches where they read it. They rejoice over it. But for some reason, they interpret where it says the Lord or God. They insert the Son of God and the name of Jesus instead of saying the name of the Creator. They exalt the name of of the Son, the name of Jesus, over the name that is above all names. Because the scriptures plainly tell us it's that the name of Yahweh that every knee will bow and every tongue will swear that Yahweh is Lord. 
So why is in the New Testament they're going to say is, is that Jesus' name? Or that's the way the church interpreted it. Could it be that the church is interpreting it wrong and that it's not talking about? Is that the name of Jesus? Could it be talking about is that the name of Yahuwah? That what it was originally covering when you go back into the reference and see, okay, where's that coming from? And go back to the original. It is talking about Yahuwah is the name above all names. And it's at his name every knee will bow and every tongue will swear or confess that he and he alone is king of kings. Remember, David said, he is the king of glory. When I say he, David said, Yahuwah is the king of glory. He is our king. So, this is um, to give you better understanding. It's, 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 it's verses, texts like this that drew me away from staying within Christianity. Psalms 27 um, is a good point to go to and to see, okay, I can see why this brother and countless thousands upon thousands have come out of church, have come out of Christianity, and have returned to the ancient path. The ancient way of their forefathers. And embrace only the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And couple no other name along the holy set apart name of Yahuwah. He is the Elohim. He is our power. He's my king. And he's my God. So that's all I wanted to share with y'all to give y'all a better understanding. And once again... We just finished looking at Psalms 27. Shalom, love, and blessings. This is your brother. This is your friend. Mayaya Benya. Hallelujah.